What's up, guys? Iggy here, back at you with another episode of Holster Building. I want to start off by saying thank you, 10,000, actually, we're like 10,020 right now, so that's, I never thought that would happen, so that's awesome, and just for, you know, um, poops and giggles, I decided to look at the stats of the channel, and since I started in December of 2019, we have just under 975,000 views on uh, 300 videos, so that's pretty epic and that's making me think that I'm doing something that works so um, but I got a lot to do it has been one hectic week I had uh, a couple builds come up where and this is when you know it's too long where I did a beautiful order it was a VP9 with PL mini 2 so I thought I built it for the PL mini 2 when it was in fact the PL2 so I had to scrap that holster actually I left it behind me because um, it was perfect, so I'm not going to throw it out. I'll just put the hardware back on. Anyways, so I rebuilt it with my last piece of black carbon fiber, and I nicked the inside clear as day where you can see it when it's on, and it bothered the hell out of me, and there was no way to fix it. So I had a junk it, and brand new carbon fiber, as you can see right there, just came in. I ordered 11, 12 sheets, 13 sheets, uh, mostly regular black and then carbon fiber, so I could get... Uh, more orders out i just had a store put in an order for 30 holsters that's going to be awesome and then um just trucking along but for now we're going to be doing a uh, build for one of our viewers actually all of these are pretty much builds for our viewers but this one is a uh rock 57 with the uh, tlr9 so i'm going to go ahead and get it all together and then uh, not this video, but the next video I'm going to do is the Rock 57 with a solo fish flashlight. Flashlight, I believe it's called, and um, it's a very odd shaped flashlight, but it should be uh, actually pretty easy. Um, and we're gonna I'm gonna walk you through doing a random flashlight like that. But this build is going to be the Rock 57 with TLR9 IWB. So let's get the ovens on and let's get everything put together. I don't believe I've done this combo before, which means we're going to have to cut a new um, retention plate, which is no big deal. Alright, so uh, let's just kind of read through the order here. It is uh, flat dark earth, right hand, 1.5 foamy, threaded barrel, streamlight TLR9 with the claw. So I've already pulled everything I needed. Got this, which is going to be going right around here. And we got the foamy. So let's get to building. You know, I have this on here already. There's no need to tape it in place. I have nails, drilled holes, and this goes uh, just right there. The 916 socket with the washer that I welded on and a threaded nut cert inside there for the threaded barrel which allows you to have larger thread protectors on there than uh, the factory. And we're going to be using our in-house cut, which as soon as I finish programming all of them, there will be available. And where's the rest of them? There we go. So these are just the same. Cut them out of uh, eighth inch aluminum stock. And this one's going to be going right there. And then on this side, this one's going to be going down a little bit, and what I have done, if I could find it, uh, let's see, where to go? Which is odd, because I put everything in the same spot. Uh, so before, I actually cut a dime to fit that for the TLR7. That space isn't there on the TLR7, because it's a lot smaller. Uh, so what I did is I cut a quarter, and apparently it has grown legs. And move, but anyways, I'll find it after the fact. So let's get um, let's get this going. Let's get it built. And let's get it out the door, so we can move on to the next one. We're gonna do our five layers of tape. And if you're new to the channel, the reason why I do five layers of, of tape 
is so that the kydex isn't resting directly against the side of the uh, handgun. Uh, that's how scratches happen and whatnot, but you can't go too much because you get a wiggle. You can't go too less because that's where you get uh, premature wear. So, and then I like to cut that out because we need all the give we can get right in that area because right here, right behind the mount, this is where our retention will be. So we'll move on and do this one. And if you didn't know, this is a multi-mold, uh, full mold. I think they're the only company right now that do full molds. Um, and they are not available on vacuum just yet. But I will be custom making in-house vacuum uh, molds. And that's coming up soon. I technically, I have the funds for the 3D scanner. Um, but it, it's a big build. Uh, it, it's a big... It's a, a lot of um, dead presidents so uh, I'm gonna wait a little bit until I get one more store order I'm hoping on an order of a hundred plus which that's what I'm waiting on so anyways all right so let's get this going we'll start off with this side this side's the easy side there's nothing we need to do on this side it is already blocked thanks to multi molds um, you got to remember the magazine release I cut that and I shaved it when I shave something I put black on it so I know that it needs to be blocked but with the light blocking we don't have to worry about it uh, I am gonna put something here though let's see how it fits with that on too tall let's go down to the next that's perfect so I'm gonna take that right there and I'm just gonna lock that in place Oop. This is going to be held right. I'm going to go down slightly. Like so. And then I'm going to anchor it right in place right here. And then just a little piece of blue tape. Just put it on the bottom. All right. Now we'll flip it and do this side. This side we're going to do upside down. And we're going to get enough right here so it has enough to lock on. So we do that just like that. Square it up at the top of the slide. Hold it in place. And the reason why I use the back of the pencil is to get a sharp tape line. If you just go straight across, then what you get is something called tenting. And then you get little to no definition on your foam presses. There we go. piece of tape there's a buckle in it which will show so let's try that again there we go and I like to attach these two to try and help it from moving up and down all right, so now one thing that we have to realize is this right here is going to be wiggling right here. So I need to go down with it. And what I'm going to do is go down with the sickness. I'm going to grab some more blocking that I have. And I'm going to line this up right about here. And this is going to do two things. The reason why I'm going so far down is because when you have your foamy, see how it's almost 100% of the clip on the foamy is touching something. Without that... It. only a portion of it is holding so or touching rather so what that means is you have this much surface area touching your belt and the belt can squeeze through here so it's going to be easy for this to come off so what I try to do in every build is have it so the clip is touching 
as close to 100% as possible with the mold. Sometimes it doesn't work, and there's a couple tricks you can do, as in, there's been chances, I actually just built an outside the waistband that they requested to foam me, where I actually bent this a little bit. So instead of that angle, it actually sat like that, and it pressed up against the trigger guard, and it worked beautifully. So don't be afraid to think out the box and do stuff like that. All right, get this tucked in, tucking it in for the definition. There we go, still plenty of room right there. And what I do is I like to grab it, and then that, I like it so this line is past my knuckles. So we're gonna put it right around there. So that, it's gonna go right there. And the reason being is there's plenty of room and you don't have to reach inside your pants to grab the firearm. But if people want something higher up, for those of us with a tactical muffin top, then what we can do is we can move it higher up. But the drawback is you're going to have to reach in your pants to get your firearm. All right. So there's two more things left to do. Number one is retention plate, and number two is this. And I'm going to see if I could find that quarter because I don't feel like cutting up another one. Well, couldn't find it. So. We're gonna do it again. Just wanna get the middle. And we're just gonna find a place to cut. What about that? That looks about good. Take some shears. And I'm just going to flatten that out in the vise real quick. Sorry, Mr. Washington. All right, so we're going to lay that pretty much right there. And that's at the point where we're not going to get any definition in there. So we're not going to have to worry about any extra retention coming from that spot. All right, well, this is ready to press. Uh, now we're just gonna have to do the retention. I'll walk you through that. Now this retention plate is is just quarter inch MDF. This is uh, some scrap I have laying around. And what I'm gonna do is line up the top of that. This is a tracing marker. It's a deep reach marker. You can get them on Amazon for like seven bucks for a pair. And just go ahead and trace. And there you go. And I'm going to cut on the inside line. And I'm going to take my uh, circular saw here and just zing it just like that. Let's check this out. I like it tight, said every man. So let's, uh, oh yeah. Awesome. Yep, I can live with that. And what we're gonna do is tape that in place. So, yeah. 
All right, and then let's get some thick stuff over here. center and then I just follow the blocking up and then make sure it sits like so and now we are 100% ready I lied I still got to cut the the material so let's go ahead and grab that all right some FDE bam right there it is right there this is FDE uh, spring the darker one actually I think that piece might be perfect a little long that's all right. Go ahead, let's go this way. Yeah, I'm going to keep the length. I'm going to keep that. But I'm going to cut this end off. About an inch, inch and a half off of it. All right. Let's check our ovens. Well, we know this is up to temp. I'm going to go ahead and close that to get some moisture out. And then let's see. Oh, yeah. Nice and squishy and warm. It's been sitting under 390 degree heat since we started, so we'll do that. But like I said, let's clean this real quick. And we're gonna let that do an entire cycle. Not the 300, because I just did a sublimation. Here's what the sublimation looks like. It was a 1911 with TLR1. Um, and so we're gonna let that burn off and continue. And while that's burning off, it is finally a day of summer here in New Hampshire. There was no rain today. It poured all yesterday and all weekend, and it's gonna pour tomorrow and the rest of the week. Joy. Although, I am gonna be in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the world's largest Mopar car show. So if you're in the area, go there. Maybe you'll see me. Oh. <laughs> Finally out of the press and it looks freaking awesome. All right, so here we go. This is uh, what we're looking at right now and literally all it's left to do is we're gonna cut it up and hopefully I don't mess it up. Because <laughs> that one that I messed up the other day, I you know what, it's probably still in my trash, but it was gorgeous. But like I said, I nicked it. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and separate this. These are probably fused together. Yep, they're fused together. So generally what I'm gonna do is just gonna cut right down this line and then I'm just gonna open it up, slide this out. And then I will go ahead and put the TLR9 on the blue gun that I use for the test fitting and everything like that. So, uh, without further ado, let's cut it. And like I said, get it out. It is a little after 11, so it's been a long ass day. So let's get it done. Yes. All right, now that we're out, I could finally go ahead and uh, trace out what we want to do. And this quarter was perfect, and the indent right there, I think we're going to need zero adjustments on this. This just looks damn good. Uh, so, uh, remember, this is clawed. So, I remember there used to be a time where I would always forget, and what would happen is I'd drill the holes without the claw on them. So, I'm going to do that. 
That's going to go right there. There we go. And with this setup, I'm going to add another one as well. So if we continue that hole spacing, it'll be right there. All right. So we're going to cut this pretty much flush at the end so it's an open bottom. Come up and then over and then straight down. Pretty good angle there. I'm going to line this up. Now this is going to come up here and just go like that. So we're going to right here. And I'm actually going to cut on this side of the line because if I go further, it might cut into the trigger guard. Or, well, the area over the trigger guard. Uh, so do that. And come down. And the optic usually goes till about there. So the optic is generally just sitting right about there. But we'll go just a little bit further. And then up. All right, so we'll drill out our six holes and then go ahead and cut. And don't forget, clean your hole. Now we're just going to cut this out. I'm going to bring this with me, and like I said, I'm going to cut on the furthest uh, outside of the line, and then uh, I'll change it up if need be. Two hundred and twenty grit, <laughs> wit. Two hundred and twenty grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean the edges, and then we're gonna hit it on the buffer. Right. So we pretty much got. Everything all set. Uh, still have to uh, deburr these holes right here. This is a Noga uh, RC or RC two thousand. You can find it on Amazon. I think it's like thirty bucks. I ended up buying every size until I figured out which size would work. So I spent like a hundred bucks on that stuff, but it's all right. Well worth it because I could always use this for other projects. Nice. Right, so we're gonna give this a clean with just regular rem oil. And we'll get off all the marks we did. course I did blow it out with the air compressor it doesn't get everything I should say air hose and we'll just clean the inside you could also like soak it in uh, in water as well if you wanted to soapy water all right ah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this together real quick All right, like I said, I did grab all the hardware. So we're going to start off with our eighth inch pass-throughs, which are going to be on the top two. These are three-quarter.
square that guy up. Tighten this down. What's good about the pass-throughs is it has the serrations on the side, so we don't have to worry about it undoing. There we go. We're going to take this. These are a quarter inch. Bada bing, bada bing. Go ahead and start tightening. Oh, this one has a tip to another one in it. Here we go. Grab our flathead and then get these guys. Oh, of course. There we go. That's one, two. Getting them in the hole to start is the hardest. Take that advice however you want. All right, and then slight pressure and rotating will get the threads caught. You know, you could actually, uh, what I used to do as well is um, I used to just, like skip the middle and you could just do, you know, like a pass through and then a bolt right here and then you have that one and that one as retention. That is perfect as well. Let's see here. So let's, judging by the how tight I have that, it's probably going to be very tight on this. Yeah, it's a little tight. So we could either loosen it up, which I'm not going to do, is I'm actually going to heat up right here a little bit. That way we still have more room to squish down in. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of heat right there and then work that in. And then that is literally going to set our retention. And like I said, with a little bit of heat and persuasion, so I just heat up just a little bit, very gentle, not enough to like completely warp it, but enough to just loosen that up. So when this goes in, it has slight pressure and then that click and then the release. So that's perfect right there. And it still leaves room to loosen or tighten on uh, whoever, you know, the personal preference of the owner. All right, we're gonna set this up with, oh, no can't. Come on, there we go. And before, throw this on, you gotta laser it. Come on, focus, there it is. Yes, daddy. No, that's not toilet paper, those are labels. Yes, daddy. And here, we're, <laughs> and here we have it all set. I'm just gonna throw it on here. This ended up being a beautiful build. Uh, customer originally wanted a Blizzard White, and Blizzard White is the hardest to keep clean, so I'm super happy he emailed me saying, you would rather FDE. So here is the finished. Oh, that's so nice. Rock 5.7 with TLR9. Beautiful. Thank you guys for watching this build on the Rock 5.7 with TLR9. It came out absolutely beautiful. Like a lot of hosters actually do. You know, like I said, there are times I mess up. I will be completely transparent and honest with you guys. Uh, it's not perfect every day. There's, um, you know, a couple times a week I do mess up and I have to throw material out. And uh, even if it's something dumb, I don't like it, out in the trash it goes. But if you like what you saw and you want to learn more, subscribe, like, share, follow, whatever you want to do. And we have the giveaway coming up since we reached 10,000 subscribers. Uh, I'm going to get on the line with Holster Smith and figure out what we're going to do. And let me know what you guys would like to see for either this giveaway or future giveaways. Because every thousand subscribers, I'm going to give away either tooling, a holster, or tooling. So, or a discount code or anything like that for you guys. Even if you want a discount code for Holstersmith, you let me know and we will hook all you guys up and uh, whatever is the best idea we'll do. So thank you guys again. Huge thank you to Holstersmith and KnifeKiss.com for sponsoring this and having, uh, you know, the ball and all the fun that we do here. So huge thank you to them and uh, I will see you guys on the next one. 
And just so you know, the next one is a PSA with a solo fish light laser combo Amazon special. Bam, that block. And we're going to knock that out. I'm going to show you how to do a no name laser for uh, your holster business. So see you later. Love you. Bye.